This is the Isle of Palms podcast, produced by Island Vibes, the Isle of Palms upscale monthly publication. The Isle of Palms podcast is all about the people, places, and events that make this island a slice of paradise. Here we are for another Isle of Palms podcast, brought to you by Island Vibes. And with us, we have Michelle, Michelle and Deb, and you guys are with the Exchange Club, correct? Correct. And one of the reasons I wanted to bring you on, you, you guys do this run every year. But before we start talking about the uh, Isle of Palms Connector Run and Walk, I want to talk about the Exchange Club. Is that okay with y'all? Sure. So, Absolutely. so tell us a little bit. I mean, everybody drives by that building. It is an awesome building. Uh, right there in Isle of Ponce. What do you all do for the community and how do you raise money? So it is all about the community. Um, we have four levels of programs of, programs service. of service that the Exchange Club does for the Isle of Ponce. We have the community, which is working with the local community. We do a lot of work with the island, Isle with of Ponce. Mm-hmm. And we do Americanism, where like right now we're having people purchase flags that we put out for the veterans. Um, And then we do youth and scholarship programs for the schools. And our committee that we love the most is um, prevention of child abuse in the low country. So this is a national uh, fundraising effort that all the exchange clubs do. It's the, the, the prevention of child abuse is the national exchange clubs main project of service it's their core mission for the country each exchange club probably handles it and does a little bit things a little bit differently but uh in 1993 the run was started and it is exclusively a fundraiser for the healing the prevention and the awareness of child abuse prevention and we are the host of that run now um yes the revenue that's generated as a result of the your y'all's hard work and what the exchange club does and all the participants where does that money go does it stay local or regional stays here in the low country that's stays awesome. here in the low country and our typical beneficiaries have been places like winwood farms in onda which is a boy's home that have suffered tremendous trauma Halos, which is a kinship care uh, organization where kin take on their kin because they've been they're into drugs or they're in jail. Um, everything from D. Norton to um, Country Orphanage. Yes, even Florence Crittenden and My Sister's House. You know, some of these organizations, their missions might not be child abuse prevention per se. Like My Sister's House is about domestic abuse. Mm-hmm. But those women have children. So we help those children. And Doors to Freedom. Doors to Freedom, freedom Darkness now. to Light. light. Uh, agencies that Darkness to Light is a great example of bringing awareness to child abuse prevention. So it's about awareness, prevention, and healing agencies. And typically it's 10, 11 beneficiaries per year, and we're in the process of making that selection right now. So each year it may have a different beneficiary might get the funds. So you guys share the love, so to speak? Yeah, basically, but we have a full application process. We select beneficiaries and we allow them to apply. And it is a pretty thorough questionnaire. We also ask for them to be involved in the run, volunteer, market it for us to your targeted audiences, put it in your newsletter. So we form a partnership with them as well. Yes. Michelle, what does it cost to uh, participate in the run? We do a sliding scale. Um, we just did our next push for August. So right now, the 10K is at $45 and the 5K is at 40 But 100% of that stays in the low country. A lot of the money is from sponsorships. And then, of course, we do a big after party for the community as well, where we have a band, we have a beer garden, we have a child area. So we do keep our cost as low as possible so that we can give the majority of the money back to the low country. I like that it's an honest, fair assessment of what's going on on the Isle of Palms. Island Vibes. Great newspaper by a great friend and uh, so glad he's, he's uh, published this because we really need it. It's impartial and uh, it's just a great paper. Island Vibes is a deal. All the money that comes in from sponsors, uh, where does that go? Does it you, does it go to the, the charities as well? 
It does. 100% of sponsorship money is paid to the beneficiaries and a little bit of the registration fee renders a little profit for us as well. But it's important to note that 100% of sponsorship money is paid out to the beneficiaries. And last year we gave away $112,000. It was wow. our best year in my knowledge, maybe yeah. in the early, early days, you know, 32 years ago when they started, when there was not a lot of competition for fundraising, they did better. But we have net, we haven't met a hundred thousand dollars in years and years. What did you do different last year that that you didn't do previous years since you guys were here? Think marketing and I think getting the beneficiaries up and front and letting the runners know why we do this and why they do this. Right. And what a difference it really makes. I agree. Even though it's been going on for 32 years, people don't necessarily know the mission. Why? And I do think marketing has been great. We had Dude. home social to give do drone footage of the run last year. And it's spectacular. I noticed you sent that to us so we can include it. You can see it yeah. now. People watching it on, on uh, YouTube. They can, they're looking at it while we're talking about it. Right. This wow. drone footage is great. Yes, and I agree. Even though we have a serious mission and this is why we do it, it really is a fun, smaller community event. And what a scenic run to run across the connector and come back. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It really is. Okay. Well, speaking of that, the most important thing I think is y'all run it too, right? Oh, well, mm, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Deb does. Deb walks it. But this year, you know what? I'm not going to because we have the after party. Yeah, and I'm too busy on the back end getting everything ready right. for, by the time I get back to my awards tent, the first runners are already coming across yes. the bridge. So. Well, in all seriousness, yes. so, this is a strictly a voluntary thing. You guys volunteer your time to make this happen, do you not? Absolutely. And I, I got to think it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of volunteer time and probably the day of event. Woo, uh, starting the day, a couple of days before, because you've got one day Mount Pleasant, which is so amazing to us. They um, give us the ability to use their tents. So they come out on Thursday and place the tents in place in order. The town of Mount Pleasant does it? Yes. yes town of Mount That's Pleasant awesome. donates their tents and set up and take down. So we're out there on Thursday getting ready for the run that happens on Saturday. We're putting tents in places. We're putting tables in places. We're just um, having porta potties put in. Right. Um, it is yeah. Basically, you're making it happen. Getting a stages. We have to get two stages put in. Right. Um, our opening stage and our stage for the band at the after party. How this many runners will we have? Oh, we are over 1,200 runners already. We are projected to have over 1,500 runners this year, which is a lot. I love the way you say that. Whoa. That's, yeah, cool. that's a lot. Last, well, year, last year was 950 runners. Yeah. So that's Wow, y'all. That's great. Yes. Yeah. Just and think runners, of the children that you're helping. And runners don't come alone. Runners come with friends. Yes. Yeah, so it's oh, a yeah. lot of people. Bill, I wanted to mention just it's important to note, too, that we do this in collaboration with the city of Isle of Palms and the town yes. of Mount Pleasant because they supply us with tents. We, they're first responders. We have police that close off the road. It, it does take a lot of effort between the exchange club and the two cities to pull this yep. off together. Everybody likes to say, but it's so true. This is obvious right here. It takes a village. It really does. And, and you know, it takes definitely communication. So I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to hear that. And support from our community as far as our volunteers. Um, we open up our volunteers to our club members first, and then we open it up to the community. And without those volunteers, Marshall A, Marshall B, Marshall C, D, serve the beer, e, serve the beer <laughs> um, you know, we wouldn't be able to do it either. Right. So it, when they say it takes a village, it truly does take a village. Uh, also, we haven't said when the run is. The run is Saturday, October 5th. It is the first Saturday of every October, and this is the... 32nd Second year. year because it started the year the connector was finished in 1993. So yeah. um, October 5th, first Saturday every year. And most of our locals, they know it's coming. Yeah. They look forward to it. But we're getting more and more people from out of town. Everybody but, needs um, an excuse to visit Isle of Palms. Right, so this is their right. excuse, you know, for the bridge. Exactly. Exactly. So we're we're headed to to do well this year. We're really working on fundraising sponsorships. We're at about eighty two thousand in pledges, and I need over a hundred. I really want one hundred and twenty five. So um, 
We're available for any questions. There are benefits to being a sponsor, not just supporting the cause. Tell us what the benefits are. Island Vibes is already participating. Exactly. This is an example right here with the podcast, but I believe in what y'all are doing. How does it benefit the business? What does that look like? Right. Well, we have a, a run t-shirt and Michelle's got one on and here's another one, but the back will be full of logos. And of course, Island Vibes will be on there. Um, if you're $1,000 or more, you get your logo on the t-shirt. You can be present at the after party, have a booth, have a tent, promote your business. Banner. Banner. You can hang banners. We get them. We hang them all the way down to, we'll take any amount of money, but starting at $500, it gives you free registrations. So for $1,000, you get four runners for free. So right there, you're talking about a $200 value. So you're saying 1,200 people are already registered to uh, run? Yes, yes exactly. Mm -hmm. What's your projection for this year's total runner, do you think? Over 15. And they all have fr friends and family that will be there. That's yes. right. It'll it's going to be fun this year. Yeah, it's going to be great. great. Where do they hold the after party event? Where's that held? At? It's in the municipal parking lot, right be right behind, right beside the fire station, off okay. of just Long okay. and Pavilion. As you face the fire station, it's immediately to the left. To the right, if you face to the, the right, sort okay. of an open lot there. Yeah, the open lot. And the start this year is on. Is it on Palm Boulevard? It is on Palm. We had we did change the race course this year to accommodate all the runners and the first responder needs in case there are any emergencies. So we are starting on Palm Boulevard right before the post office. Okay. And then going down towards the connector over the connector. And then the finish line will be on JC long. What is the fastest somebody's ever run it? You oh know? my goodness. I almost want to say like 15 minutes if that. 12. I don't know, but that's a good thing for us to look at. Cause we yeah. do, we do have prizes for, for the winners of the different age groups, we do have prizes. Break down the age group. What does that look like? We break it down from, I think it's like zero to 13, 13 to 15, 15 to 18, and on up, all the way to 99. Yes. We have some we regular, have a 99, yeah. regular runners that are that are up there in age. We're not going to say they're old. What percentage of the, of the runners are from out of town? Do you know? You know, it's probably small, but it could be. 15%. It could be 20%. Yeah. I mean, it's like the woman, you know, this woman in North Carolina who owns a dog kennel, she's a runner, has sponsored the run, and she's coming to run it because she has a family history of child abuse. And that's a wonderful thing to hear. So she's coming down with friends and people that use her business to stay in town to do this run. To hear you say that, this is, I always believe there's always a silver lining. And Absolutely. with such a terrible thing, of child abuse, you guys, yes, I know it's a run, I know it's a bit, but it is a silver lining for such a terrible thing. Right, absolutely. I mean, any any critical tough subject, awareness is key. Awareness is key. And um, that's not only raising money, but we're promoting awareness. We all have to be sort of active in being helpful. In, in Island Vibes, we really enjoy bringing the community together on the island and stuff. We're all about community, and I have to say one of the things I was excited about doing this with y'all, besides I knew I was with some fun people, okay, <laughs> what, was the fact that um, this is a community event, the same re and it bring you guys are bringing people together the same way we feel we do every time we publish an edition of Island Vibes. Yep, community event, and I'm sure we have many, many regular runners, and oh, we did. in 32 years, we had to cancel one year for COVID, and then way back when, which I almost feel like we might see it again this week, it's the 100-year flood that we have. But only two times has it had to be canceled. And we've been really lucky with yeah. weather all those other years. I mean, we've never had a real washout. Mm -hmm. So It's fun for me to listen to y'all's enthusiasm because here you are, excuse the language, busting your butt to yes, make it know. happen. Yes, everyone okay? does. <laughs> to, everyone to make does. it happen for such a great cause, you guys. It's something you're giving up your time for, for such a good cause. And you can just hear the enthusiasm in y'all's voice. So it's, it's just really, we, really good. There's a great team. Michelle is the chair of the run. I do sponsorships and the child abuse prevention beneficiary part. But there's a huge it's core a, team of well-oiled machine. Oh, everyone yes. has their moving part. And without everyone doing their part, you're going to have a hiccup. So yeah. everyone does an amazing job. We have your operations. You've got your marketing. 
You've got your volunteers, you've registration, got registration, treasure, all treasure. of it. And then, you know, people like you guys with Island Vibes and other, other after companies party. helping us with, even after 32 years, to continue to get the word out. What's the URL for the website for y'all? It's iopron.com. iopron.com. Very simple. You can go there and find out about sponsorships. You can register. And again, if you sponsor us, you can get some freebies to register for free and some other benefits. So yeah, reach out to And us. volunteer. And volunteer. Yeah, volunteer. It's, it's actually really fun to volunteer. Thanks again for joining us on the Isle of Palms podcast. And, and Island Vibes certainly uh, supports this event. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you for listening or watching the Isle of Palms podcast produced by Island Vibes, the Isle of Palms upscale monthly publication. Find past and current episodes by visiting islapalmspodcast.com.